Mr. Burst, you also have three minutes. Thank you, Professor Potts. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Leonard Burst, Jr. And for 12 years, the people of this city, by their votes, entrusted me with the honor and privilege to serve as city commissioner. It is my personal belief that this valuable experience as city commissioner has given me a unique preparation needed for the position that I am seeking today, which is mayor of the city of Wake Ross. During my tenure as city commissioner, there were many accomplishments achieved that I believe allowed the city to move forward. Several of these accomplishments were the creation of new local businesses, increasing the number of paved streets and street lights, building of a new city fire station, promotion of a state health laboratory, and the establishment of an ordinance to ban smoking in city-owned buildings. I have the experience where experience counts, right here in the city of Wake Forest. I definitely realize that there are many challenges that lie ahead of us as we move forward. However, I know that we will be able to face them together. I say that we will be able to face them together. By being one team, with one vision, we can accomplish anything. One team, one vision, one purpose for a better way for us. If we are going to move this city forward, now is the time for strategic political leadership. It is a time for leadership that measures and balances the needs of every neighborhood and every person. In order for us to lead the city efficiently and effectively, the next mayor will have to work tirelessly to gain confidence of every area of our city. I believe that I am the strategic political leader that's needed today. I believe that my past history in this community over the years and my record of service as city commissioner tells my story. As mayor, I look forward to being able to represent my insightful views and ideas on a wide variety of issues. I feel that the exchange of ideas is the cornerstone of the democratic process. Not only is the exchange of ideas important for an election, it also serves as an important aspect of the political process. As I reflect on my experience as city commissioner, I have learned the importance of clearly and concisely sharing ideas and opinions. No one commissioner or mayor has the magic formula to solve the issues that face our city and county. However, by working together, I want to reiterate, by working together, we, the mayor, the city commission, and the citizens will be able to address the issues that concern us today. It is only by sharing and considering our different perspective and sharing our different perspectives can we most beneficial make the most beneficial decisions for each of us. Otherwise, the resulting decision and outcomes will be unduly favorable to one group at the expense of another. Today I am running for mayor because I believe in the future of Waycross and I desire to make a difference in our city. I know that the challenges we face today can be addressed, thank you, if we meet them together. We can make Waycross a great city in which all of us want to live and raise our families. I also offer my candidates for mayor of the city of Waco because I believe that a lifetime of experience and volunteerism in this community has prepared me for this job. Time is up, sir. Thank you. Before the panelists begin, I want to also announce that when the timekeeper is doing this and bell rings, I'll, I'll be watching for the next 30 seconds, and if I have to, I'll let the candidates know that the time is up. Uh, so far, it's gone very well. Okay, at this time, would the panelists please proceed? Okay. A question for both candidates. How do you feel about city and county consolidation? Mr. Burst. Okay. Would you repeat the question, please? What are your feelings about city and county consolidation? City and county consolidation look like every now and then this beast raises its ugly head in the city of Wake Cross. I think, uh, I believe it was Commissioner Hopkins, she gave probably the best answer, it's not broke, don't fix it. But let me say this right here, when I was on the city commission, this issue came up about consolidation. And I wrote an article to the paper. And in my article, really the gist of it was, if consolidation was such a great avenue to reduce taxes and to make things all wonderful and a fix all and a cure all for everything, why haven't more cities and counties consolidated in Georgia? At that time
time, only 33, I believe, cities and counties had consolidated. And some of them had been a long time by consolidated. And I think someone alluded to the fact that, you know, even with Columbus and Muskogee County, and the long tenure they, they've had as consolidated governments, they still have to realize the savings that it was sold to be. So at this time, I don't think it's a good thing for the city of Way Cross and Way okay. County to consolidate. Thank you. Same question. Same yeah. question. I totally concur with uh, basically what uh, my opponent has stated. Uh, yes, the question is going to continue to come up. But no, to be honest with you and to be honest with any and all of your presidents this evening, and actually, if you read the newspaper tomorrow, you may say, no, I do not agree that we should consolidate at this point in time. I don't see any benefit from it. I've gone through the consolidation with the public school district and had my thought there many, many times. So, no, I think we, there, are things, there are other things that we should concentrate on, and I believe we can concentrate on and serve us much better as opposed to consolidating at this point in time. Another question for both candidates. Let me start off with the village first. What is the greatest asset the city of Waycross possesses? What's the greatest asset? Yes. Is that the we the city, the city, the city of Waycross, Waycross. Waycross possesses? I think it's people. And I'm being very honest when I say that. I think that is the greatest asset that any of us have. Our people. We have the greatest people, I believe, in the world here in Waycross. But we also must monitor ourselves, and we also must, in my opinion, give more to those who come in to Waycross and invite more to come in. We can talk about large manufacturing companies, large corporations. I guarantee you, and we all know this, if we need to possibly start looking at recruiting more smaller businesses, because we recognize that small business really carries the load of the world, quite frankly. We start looking at it. This is a small business. I think we need to possibly look at what we're doing economically and not necessarily try to get a Fortune 500 company, but at least get a hundred company as opposed to. And I think that's exactly where we should be concentrating. I believe that's the direction we're going. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burst, the same question. What is the greatest asset the city of Waycross possesses? Thank you. Um, I concur with the answer that my opponent gave us in regards to the uh, citizens of Waycross, the people of Waycross. But just to take it a step further, not only is the citizens of Waycross, but I think we have a valuable asset in our strategic location where Waycross is located. The climate of Waycross, the uh, infrastructure, our water sewer plant, we have a we have excess capacity right now so that we can accommodate these industries that he alluded to when they come in. And also, you know, we have uh, one of the most modern classification of railroad yards here in the city of Waycross. We have a new pellet plant that has come online. So we're strategically located, and the reason I know that we're strategically located and this is a valuable asset to the city is because people look at this community. They look at the proximity to the ports, they look at the proximity to the airport, so we're sitting in a good spot. All we have to do is market ourselves correctly. And one of the things that I would like to do is not only wait for industry to try to come to us, but as may I try to maybe personally see what I can do to try to recruit. Because a lot of times you never know who you're talking to, you never know who you're interacting with, and it could be just that one conversation that can get someone here to really look at weight cross. Because we are like a diamond sitting in the rough. A lot of people don't really realize the potential that we have here in weight cross. So I think we have a, a lot of valuable assets, but the most valuable asset is the citizens of Waycross. Okay, um, I have several questions from the audience for Leonard Berg. Um, first of all, can you tell us how much money does the city of Waycross generate? How much money does the city of Waycross generate? A whole lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you this right here. I believe that the last budget was somewhat, and they put between 18 and 20 million dollars. 
So if that was suffice, without getting in, if I could get a little bit more specific, if you allow me to talk to Mr. Larry Gass, he could tell me right down at the street. They have a lot of money, but they also have a lot of overhead and a lot of expenses. Okay, and the next question piggybacks on that. Please tell us about your managerial skills and the amounts of money that you personally have managed. I presume it's part of the business. Well, uh, let me say this right here. Now, I think that uh, you say how much money have I managed? That's the question. How much money have I managed? Yeah. Just can you what, last elaborate? week, last month. Well, <laughs> question. I, I think it goes along with telling us about your managerial skills and how you've managed money and can you give us some examples? Okay, I, I raised uh, three kids. I <laughs> had a dog at one time. But no, on a serious note, we've been in the building business in Wake Forest for a number of years. Probably some of you out here Matter of fact, we built the mayor's house. <laughs> but, you know, as far as managing the money, you know, we have small business right now where we do home repairs and we still do home construction. So I manage money. And I've worked in Rio for almost 40 years. And so a lot of money has gone through it. A lot of money has gone, come, gone out and a lot of it come in also. And the next question piggybacks on what you just said. Um, since you work for the railroad, you'll have to be out of town often on your job. If the city has an emergency, how will you be able to serve the city if you're out of town? If I'm out of town, well, you know, that could happen anytime. Even if you were retired, you could be out of town. <laughs> I work sometimes out of town. Right now, currently, I'm working in town. But let me say this right here. I served on the city council for 12 years. I think I missed two, maybe three meetings during that whole time. Amen. So I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> I have two more questions. If you're elected, how do you plan to bring jobs to the city? How do I plan? Mr. Burks? Yeah, oh. Mr. Burks, he's wrong. Mr. How do I plan to bring jobs to the city? I think by working closely with our development authority, Oda, and Wake Forest, Wake County, Authority, any avenues or any means that I can use to try to help recruit industry in here. And I think by working and supporting our economic development uh, organ, I think this is one of the most important things. If we work and try to support them, they are really the liaison between the city and the businesses. Personally, on a personal note, as I indicated earlier, anytime that I would have the opportunity to talk to someone that I know is interested in coming to Waycross, or I know someone that's interested in coming to Waycross, I will make it my personal mission to try to recruit that individual or individuals. And the last hey, I, I, oh, sorry, this is ahead. that type of question that I think I'd like you to also ask to Mr. Billups. Yes, sir, Mr. Billups, if you're elected, how do you plan to bring jobs to the city? If I'm re-elected, I will continue to work with the local business and industry council, if you will, here. Obviously, uh, Industry, in my opinion, has a lot to do with just not one person, individual involvement. You're going to have to involve a lot of us. You really do. We're going to have to really continue to involve our city council, our city commissioners. We started one of the very best, I believe, in South Georgia, Southeast Georgia, particularly, uh, economic <clears throat> development within the city of County. Of course, the county. Obviously, they decided that they, they do not want to well, a faction of the county members that they do not want to participate, continue to participate. But we have to work very closely. We have to work with uh, the Alabama Town, Town Development Authority. And of course, uh, as an individual, I have always said I want to be the very best ambassador for our community that I can be. I should always be that great ambassador. <coughs> you never know, as the, uh, my opponent stated, with whom. Uh, you're talking with and where you meet, sometimes nothing does. And networking does help. It really does. And making the right appearances and making the right appeal to get yourself appointed to the right boards. 
And my last question is for both. Um, what civil rights organizations are you a member of? Who is first? Uh, mayor. Uh, I'm a member of all. I'm a member of the uh, local as well as the national and the OACP. I've been, uh, I, yeah, <coughs> I'm the uh, Southern Law Poverty Council. I, I guess one could also look at it being a member of uh, many local organizations locally. I uh, haven't been a former member of the, the uh, Keystone Voters and Civic League. So those are some of the organizations I am in the world. Thank you. And Mr. Burr, same question. Yes, I'm a card carrying NAACP member. <laughs> member of the 100 Black Men of Southeast Georgia, which has not been a civil rights organization, but they work with the uh, mentoring program. As I said, Keystone Voters League, uh, black member of the Keystone Voters League. Um, that's about it, and you know, anytime that I can try to help and try to support organizations that's for the betterment and for the equality of all people, I'm 100% right. I have a question for Mr. Burst. Given Waycross's location and resources, what are some of the green businesses do you think that we could attract to the city? What are some of the green businesses? Other than, and it and not be a restaurant. <laughs> I'm glad you said that, Reverend Ben, because you know I was thinking when you were talking about restaurants. And restaurants are good, but you know if you don't have jobs and you don't have people that's got the money, restaurants are soon gonna fold up. But as far as the dream business, I would like to see a lot of what I would call clean industry in the city of Waco, such as pellet plant that uh, has come online during Mayor Billups' uh, tenure. Uh, Jobs of that nature, and job that's going to really pay a good wage, a good salary, so that someone can really, you know, go out and, you know, buy furniture, they can buy a home car, they can have homes built, you know. So I think that you need industry that's going to really help benefit the community. I know one time we uh, were entertaining a poultry plant, and, you know, this was a big thing and everything, but, you know, in retrospect, you know, it could have been a blessing in disguise maybe that it didn't come at that time because of the, the baggage and the, the, the thing that comes along with that type of industry. I know we need those type of industry, but you ask me my dream is, I would like to see good, clean jobs here. Uh, the green energy right now, you know, jobs that really make a good living for the people in the city of Waycross. Jobs that will, uh, our kids can come back home to. You know, my daughter and her husband, they just come back in from Japan. You know, and I would like to have something that way she could really utilize her education and remain right here in the city of Waycross. Mr. Phillips, same question. We've talked a lot about economic development this evening, and I think that's where we're still talking about, and that's where we're going. I, I think that we need to look at, uh, and I totally concur again with uh, Mr. Burris regarding green uh, chemistry. That's trendy now. You will, but I think we need to look at some things that are going to be more sustain, sustainable, and that we need to look at uh, building our infrastructure more. And you know, be honest about we can put people to work really locally, and we do need to work on our infrastructure a lot. We can do more of that. I also believe that when we look at uh, sustainable jobs in the future, we're going to have to. We have some wonderful, wonderful schools in Waycross College as well as Waycross uh, Technical College. We need to make sure our youth and our community, and certainly our employable population, become more attuned and hopefully will graduate, but certainly get at least as much as they can possibly get in building their skills and technology. And of course, in service, in particularly in health care as well. Thank you. Mr. Burris, this question is for you. Um, there, have, there seem to be a concern about citizens being able to address the city council. Will you open up the lines of communication? There seems to be an issue about the citizens addressing the city council. What, not being able to? Not being able to address. The city council. Okay, well, 
I'm not aware that the citizens are not able to address the city council because as citizens and as uh, citizens of the city of Waycross, they have that right to address the city council. I think they have a process right now uh, that they sign up, you know, to speak and maybe address the uh, issue that they're going to be speaking to. And a lot of people say, well, why do they need to have some sign up and why do they need to know what you're going to talk about? Well, it's simply this. A lot of times, the commissioners may need to get some information right. so that whenever the person come up, they can give them a definitive answer rather than putting them off or telling them, well, if you don't know right now, you have to come back. This just complicates the process. But I think that the citizens have a right to speak to the city council because this is our city government. Yes, I, I'm not aware that citizens cannot address council members. Uh, our commission meetings are always up to the public. We are totally transparent. If you want to address the city commission, all you need to do is sign up before the city commission starts this meeting. Just put it on the list. You know, there once was a time, not too long ago, that you had to, <laughs> that you, you know, if you didn't sign up by Thursday noon, you didn't get off Monday work session. However, we, you know, an individual may come at all times. And I encourage, I love going out to the schools, and I love to talk to our citizens across this community. Because I think that's one, I believe in that. That's democracy. And I believe that people need to come to the city hall. I say it all the time. It's the people's house. It's not our house. It's the people's house. We just happen to work there sometimes. It is the people's <coughs> house. Come and visit. We do not uh, have anything we're going to discriminate against anyone regarding. But if you happen to come at 6.30, and if you get there before 6.59, you sign up, you're on. Do you maintain a good relationship between the city and the Board of Education? Do I maintain a good relationship between the city and the Board of Education? I think I have an excellent relationship between the city and the Board of Education. You mean personally? No. Just with the city. Okay, I, maybe I don't understand your question, brother. It says, do you. What kind of a relationship do you does the city have with the Board of Education itself? What this, how do how do these two entities come together? Okay, well I think that first of all they, they are two separate entities, they have their own separate boards. And I think that as far as the city and the school board, I think there comes a time when they have to work together maybe on certain projects and certain issues. But I think the main thing is that pretty much the city runs they're showing the school board runs there, so they have their representatives on there. And I really don't think that one should start dabbling into the other's affairs unless it's really necessary, unless they're invited to do so. Mr. Phillips? I, uh, I think the city has a wonderful work relationship with the uh, Board of Education. I am, uh, as many commissioners now, and several community members now, when I first became mayor, we started meeting with the different governmental entities. We're a county board of education, we're a county uh, board of commissioners. We all met together and started talking about things because again, if we're going to grow as a community, we must work very well with the local school district. No question regarding that. That includes the Waycross Public School, the Ware County Public School District, Waycross College, and Waycross Technical College. I think we all must work together better of, really for the better of our total community. Again, I just I just honestly think that on a personal level, I don't and I, I believe this is true with every commission. There's never been any conflict and never been anything other than support one to the other among the Way Cross City Commission as well as the Board of Education. Thank you. This is for Mr. Phillips. Why have you done nothing whatsoever to advance the idea of auditing our local development authorities? And why have you consistently opposed any accountability 
for these authorities concerning their spending of taxpayers' dollars? I do not know. I just consistently, I have, I have my reservations with respect to others. I may I just this? Others who want to become overseers, if you will, of taxpayers' dollars, when in fact we have a group, if you will, that's there. I do not oppose audits. I have had many, many, many audits over the years. I have ran a business where the, the, the revenue was twice as that of Wake Cross City. Never opposed me of that. I went to a volunteer board and they do very well, in my opinion. Very, very well. I feel that, and I'm not opposed to the audit. I believe they have had audits. I'm sure they've had audits over the years. And uh, for me to say that we're going to, as we're going to begin to legislate, if you will, what constitutional boards are doing. And I think, you know, if we're going to start doing that, we're going to just start doing the whole thing for everybody. And I just think that it's wrong. I think if people came to us and said, with regards to audits, Wake Cross City, I can assure you that the commission will reject because we do have audits and our audits have been darn good. Let those boards and commissions 